I'm here with Adam of Tribulation to talk about the latest record, Sub Rosa in Aeternum, out November 1st on Century Media. Thank you very much for taking the time. Um, how's things been with you? Thank you for having me. Uh, we think of, things have been uh, excellent, to be honest. Very productive and uh, inspiring and, I guess, in ways, challenging uh, year. Um, but uh, it, it kind of feels like we're starting over again now, uh, post-pandemic startup again. Uh, so we're in a good place, for sure. Uh, I was not going to start with this question, but I'm forced to because I cannot stop playing the album, right? So <laughs> the first thing that I had, I was not going, I was going to ask you down the road, but I have to ask you this. Did you guys high five after you finished recording and you said to yourself, <laughs> wow, this is our best album ever. And everybody just starts high fiving everybody. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's pretty much what, what happened. That was, that, that was the general vibe in the band for sure we were we went into the recording uh or into the writing process i guess and the recording with uh without that much uh, that much of an idea of where we were going with it um as of, of course the the new thing is the clean vocals and that wasn't a given when we started writing it um and during the recording, I think we all went into somewhat of a, a bubble, not really thinking about any, anything else, the future, I guess, but people would think about the album and the, the new elements. Uh, but we kept going because we, 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 um, we all... Well, like you said, we were all high fiving <laughs> constantly, more or less. <laughs> so yeah, we we are very happy with, with the result. It's funny that you mentioned the clean vocals. I think it's one of the greatest elements of the record. Actually, I think the vocals in general, because they're super dynamic. Uh, from song to song, you guys took a very specific vocal approach with the mood of the track in mind, and I thought that created such a rich experience because. Uh, even in songs for, from an overall album design, even in songs where musically things may not necessarily change that much, you guys change the vocals, which still creates this this up and down roller coaster constantly throughout the entire album. So when you're when you're sitting down and you have these songs in your hands, did you guys thought about all of these details when it came to the track listing and putting the whole record together? Yeah, we did. We did. We spent we spent a lot of back and forth time with the with the track listing for sure you gotta you gotta find a a, a good good flow when it comes to track listing and you know at first we we did think about um we did think about it in a way that could have been easier i guess on on the listener to kind of um with a helping hand, I guess, into the new material. Uh, and it kind of ended up that way um, with the uh, Saturn coming down, coming quite early and Tainted Skies as well, uh, with with the growling vocals as well. But uh, we it wasn't, in the end, it wasn't because of, of uh, holding hands, I guess, with the listeners, uh, and because, of course, we realized that we were going to release singles <laughs> way ahead of time. So, you know, people will already have heard those songs. So in the end, it's really, uh, it's really about that, uh, that flow, you know, to, to, to get the, the dynamics right, I, I, I guess. Uh, but yeah, we thought about, um, and yeah, you, you asked about the vocals. Um, Johannes was still, I mean, he hasn't been singing before. Uh, so he was always and constantly finding his own voice. And I think that that was a good, that added something, I think, to the recording because uh, he does sing like according to the song, <laughs> I guess. Uh, and it changes. Um, 
and I I'm not sure it's entirely because he but he yeah he was he was always talking about finding the right guy for for the <laughs> the particular song you know so I I think that might have had something to do with that it's funny you say the right guy because when I was li- I was talking to my son last night about the album because he was asking me about uh, he hasn't heard it and I said wow at one point in time you think that there's nine different singers because each song <laughs> has such a a unique delivery that that goes with the mood of the sound and the mood of the song that you think they would have like a whole cast of guest vocalists on the record it's so <laughs> dynamic vocally I'm uh, gl- very glad to hear that I, I because I hadn't been, I, I haven't been thinking about that for a while so you kind of re- reminded me of this yeah it's I'm amazing very glad to hear that yeah <laughs> yeah and w- when you look at at the sound I, I'm not going to define it for you but I would like you to help me define it for me mm-hmm. when it comes to the tapestry of the sound on this record because I think it's at the surface, it sounds like a very simple album, but under the surface, there's so much texture. There's so much in the sound experience. There's so many different influences in the in the sound. Um, how would you describe to somebody who hasn't heard the record? How would you describe the sound on this? Mm. Album? Yeah, right. That's a difficult question. Uh, we because we we know what tribulation is for us, so we know how we can move with tribulation. Um, so it, it, it's been a long time, I guess, since I specifically thought about, um, a specific genre for, for tribulation. So it, it's, it, it's difficult. It's, I mean, there's elements obviously of like our old stuff, um, our black and death metal past, but there's, and there's also a lot of inspiration from old uh, horror soundtracks. That's always been a part of the band, I guess. But uh, and obviously, like goth rock or whatever you want to call all of those bands, um, as well as you know, uh, I don't know. I I listen to so much other kinds of music that kind of creeps in as well i guess uh i had something i was thinking about that just escapes me right right now but yeah it can be can be anything really i mean when we were recording murder in red all everything i was thinking about was that it sounded a little bit like like chris isaac (laughs) or someone like that yeah, and I, I know I, Joseph was talking about Billy Idol, and so there's there's all kinds of. Yeah, I was actually even thinking of a song like the Reaping song. It reminded mm-hmm. me of Nick Cave. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I was yeah, actually exactly. wondering if you guys were big Nick Cave fans because I was like, even the vo- the vocals had a little bit more of a typo neg- negative vibe, but the mm-hmm. sound had a the whole song has this like very Nick Cave feel to it. Right. Uh, yeah, we all like Nick Cave, and I think Joseph, who wrote the song. Uh, is uh, is a big fan of Nick Cave. He, he didn't apparently. He didn't think of Nick Cave when he wrote the song. And it's apparently an older song that he just had material from some other project he he's had and just reshaped it, I guess, in uh, to a tribulation song now. But. We all obviously heard it. The it's got a very distinct Nick Cave sound to it, and then of course it's called Reaping Song. <laughs> uh, but that came after. Um, Joseph wanted it to be called Reaping Song because it's it's like a ghost story, really about this couple. One of them dies and comes back to haunt the other person each fall. And you know, during the harvest, uh, and she, I, I can't remember now if it's she or he that's singing the reaping song. So the reaping song is a song within the song, <laughs> but of course, that's also a, like an homage to to Nick Cave. Yeah, for sure. I, I totally got that. I mean, the album. There, there's a little bit almost there's certain elements of like new wave as well like from the 80s in terms of the synth work and the synth it, it's just such a rich 
sounding album and, and that was kind of something that i was wondering from your perspective in terms of and it, it I, I don't care about what how you define success but when you look at what the success of this album is going to be do you think it's going to be the uniquenesses that the record has or the way you guys were able to underline its commonalities uh i don't know i have no idea to be honest it's difficult to to I find it difficult to to look at your own music like from the outside. So I I, I really don't know. I, I but I hope I hope people will will like it. I I hope our older fans will like it and at least give it a try because we all feel like the songs are solid. Yeah, uh, and it was really like enjoyable doing the uh, writing the music and, and recording it so um in a way it's already successful because of that because we we, we really uh, came out of it and felt good about it i guess but then again of course we hope that as many people as possible will like it and so that we can have bigger and better shows and so on that that's always what you what, what you want as well without like losing your integrity i guess as far as i'm concerned it's the best album you guys have ever done so for whatever that it's worth i uh i was high-fiving myself when i was listening <laughs> uh, it's so catchy it's so hooky it has great melodies super dynamic record uh it's one of the and, and the other thing that i thought was really cool is the album is not long it's like around 40 mm. minutes 41 mm. minutes and I think that's really important in today's modern day for the albums to be a little bit shorter because it allows the music to be more memorable because you can play it more often without getting mm. tired of it. Yeah, exactly. We wanted it to be, uh, we wanted it to fit on one LP. So that that was always there. Uh, one of the things that, that we actually <laughs> knew from the beginning, we wanted it to fit on one LP because of this. And we've done, I mean, we've done longer albums in the past. Our second album is 76 minutes, I think. And that was a good thing for, for that album. But uh, I do listen to long albums still at times. Um, but yeah, who, who's, who has the time <laughs> to listen to like a, a two hour album? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Yeah, I was I was talking to a friend of mine who's also in a band this week, and I was talking to him about that, that I listen to the albums on my commute to work. And my commute mm. to work is around 45 minutes each way. So if the album goes beyond that, I end up never listening to the bottom three songs of the record. Because then when I right. go back home, I press play from the start again, and there you mm. go. I miss the last three songs of the album every single time. Every single time, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so keeping the album around the 40-minute mark is perfect, because I actually get to mm. listen to the whole thing in one journey, which I, I think it's yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. It, I agree, I agree. It's these things that everybody has to think of. Uh, now, as far as the guitar playing is concerned, did you, considering the sound on this album, because uh, you guys were able to create an album that has a lot of darkness, but somehow it feels really warm, it doesn't feel cold, did you guys change, did you change anything when it came to your gear, to your guitar approach coming into the recording? Yeah, I guess we did. Um, we, I, well, the, the last, well, I was about to say, we usually play with, you know, Pretty much Marshall and Gibson. Um, the last album I did on one of those head rush pedals, and it sounded fantastic as well, I think. But yeah, for this one, we used a lot of different gear. Uh, I don't even remember how many guitars we used. Uh, and we were very, we spent a lot of time finding the right sound for each song and each section even of, of songs, combining guitars, different, amps and and different pedals so we spent we were very meticulous i guess about all of that and what i used the most i think was two twin reverb amplifiers um i wanted that i don't know twangy almost almost surfy kind of sound to mm -hmm. to some of it um 
and we just crank them up super loud. Uh, um, and I used like a Telecaster for quite a lot of it. Uh, I've done that like some, or maybe I haven't even done that before. It's not a guitar that I particularly liked in the past for whatever reason. I guess it doesn't look cool enough <laughs> or, or something. But I love playing them and I love the sound, uh, at, at, at least on, on the one I, I used. I borrowed it from a friend called uh, Robert Persson, who used, uh, Joseph used to play play with um, a while ago. Um, but yeah, we but and we also borrowed like a, a twelve string from Mikael Okefelt uh, in in Opa okay. uh, for just yeah from, for just uh, additional like whatever, not for a full song. So I we probably used like not ten guitars but maybe eight <laughs> or, or so. So yeah, we spent spent a lot of time on that, and uh, I think we used a Vox amp as well. So I don't even think we used the Marshall. Maybe Joseph did. Yeah, a lot of different stuff. Wow, that, that's insane, considering how much gear you guys used. And like I said, the album still sounds so simple, so easy to listen, so easy to digest, even though, like I said, once you go under the surface, you see it's not that simple. Uh, do, do, you, do you have a song, maybe not necessarily your favorite, but the one that has the best guitar part that you really enjoy playing that, that I don't know, like it, it has maybe a little bit of a special meaning to you? Hmm. I yeah um well the, in terms of playing it would probably be uh, like the solo for time and the vivid or is oh. something I I play like every time I pick a guitar up <laughs> you know just I don't know uh, it was it was really fun doing the solos for this one there aren't that many but the ones that are there we really put not a lot of time on them, but we were, yeah, more time than, than we usually do, I think. Uh, and I also used uh, Tom Dalgeri, the producer, and Ola Jersbjörn, the studio technician, were both key to the sound and a lot of ideas. And we, we are not gear nerds at all in the band. So we need, we need help with things like these. So it wouldn't have sounded the way it does without them. But uh, Tom brought this small, I don't know if it's like an amplifier. I, I don't think it's considered a pedal. Uh, called a Rockman <clears throat> that I use for not, not every solo, but most of my solos. And it's it was just amazing to, to plug it in. And without doing anything, it sounded like, you know, 80s. Judas Priest <laughs> or something that that specific sound that I've been looking for like since forever is in this little rock man because apparently that's what they used <laughs> um so for that uh, for that solo uh, I definitely used the the rock man uh, so that's probably the 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 one section that I like the most but I enjoy playing hungry waters like all of it uh one of my favorite songs on the record. Hands yeah, down. for me as for me as well. For me as well. Hands down. For me, it's the, that one and the Reaping Song are like the two top songs for me. But to be honest with you, it's a really hard album to break it down in individual tracks. Like which one is best? And the whole album, the whole album is magnificent. So I honestly, I it's really hard to. You, you like sometimes a little piece of one and you like a little piece of the other. But then when you listen to the whole thing, everything it's so strong and so good. And so different at the same time that that's what gives this record its its own personality, its own soul, if you will. Mm. Um, I, I, Thank I, you so much. I, I think I'm very very glad. I, I honestly, I I think I've heard the album maybe like fifty times. Like I <laughs> I cannot get enough of it. It's just such. It blew me away. Uh, even after checking out the 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 singles, I wasn't expecting mm. the record to be the way it is. And and to me, that was mm. a huge surprise. But a, a good surprise, a, a, a happy surprise. And considering how much gear you guys used, uh, how are you going to manage live? I know you're not going to play the whole album, but does that mean you have to take a little bit more gear on the road, or are you going to do some tweaks on the road for these songs to still work? Not yeah, uh, less gear actually. We I get, just in the process of scaling down. Actually, 
probably I just got this boss IR2 I think it is called like a when you don't need like an amp on stage and I I've been like refusing to do this and to use like in ears for the longest time but now I finally caved and <laughs> it's going to be so much easier to to bring everything um but there's a lot of possibilities with that one but even even if we weren't using that there's we're not going to replicate every sound in the live setting it still has to be a live setting uh, and and it works we haven't we haven't tried all the songs but the ones we've played so far um when we've been rehearsing for the tour um they they've all worked really well with just with just just the gear we have without tweaking anything really too much. So uh, I think it's gonna work well. Are are you guys excited about coming to North America with Opeth and and playing a bunch of shows in Canada and uh, in in the U.S. What's what's your expectations for that? Yeah, I couldn't have asked for a for a better tour. Honestly, I'm just. Hope the the Opet fans will like us. I I really have no idea, but I imagine a lot of them potentially could. Um, and it's just great. It's just the two of us, just Opet and us. Uh, my favorite kind of tour, to be honest. <laughs> two bands <laughs> <laughs> makes everything easier. Um, yeah, very grateful for to Opet for for letting us tag along on this ride. It's been six years since we toured North America. And it's just, it's just way too long a wait for for us and for everyone. So, uh, I think we can expect um, expect us to come over more frequently in, in in the coming years. Since there's only two bands on the tour, how much of a set time are you guys having on this one? Forty five minutes. Okay, okay, okay. That's that's not yeah. bad. That's not bad. The reason I'm asking is because you, you guys are playing in Toronto on October 14th, which is Thanksgiving for, for Canadians. Uh, I'm leaving my family behind and I'm coming to the show uh, for my very own Thanksgiving to this amazing record. And don't tell anything to the Opeth guys, but I'm really just coming to see you guys. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I won't tell anyone. <laughs> don't tell anybody. I'm going to sneak in, sneak in, watch you guys, and then sneak out so that nobody sees me uh, and, and thinks, like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm really coming to see you guys. And, uh, and that takes me to my next point, which is how much of this new album uh, are you guys planning on including on this 45-minute set list? Um, at least three songs um, we might switch it up a bit as well I guess but we have a pretty solid set at the moment that you know we try to we can't play songs from every era of the band uh, in 45 minutes but we still try to to add some of the old stuff as well um, because it fits some, some of those songs go really well with even the new stuff for some reason uh so we it's difficult it, it really is difficult and it's difficult to know what people want to hear and not just what we want to play you know <laughs> um but i think we have a pretty pretty good set list so it, at least three songs from from the new album you, you know, it doesn't matter what you play. Somebody's going to tell you that you didn't play their favorite song. So yeah, just, <laughs> always. <laughs> always. So you just got to <laughs> learn how to live with that. Uh, yeah. Adam, I won't take any more of your time. I hope to to run into you in Toronto in a couple of weeks. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in Toronto. Uh, I, I wish you guys a safe travel to North America and uh, uh, a happy and safe and successful tour and album release in, on November 1st on Century Media. Thank you very much for your time today. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, my thank pleasure. Thank you so much.